Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I will be hanging out with you today as we finally start a new series. And this will be our last series for the course. Um, this last set of videos is going to be all about ecology. Today's specific topic is going to be animal behavior. So like always, let me get you your objectives and we'll get going. By the end of this video, know or be able to do the following understand the purpose of behavior and describe the animal responses to various stimuli that's it we're talking about animal behavior today and how they kind of react to specific stimuli so first thing i want to start off with is just the basic idea of behavior and for the living world a behavior is is uh, defined as a specific response to a stimuli so stimuli comes in the nervous system processes it somehow, communicates with the muscular system, which initiates some sort of response. And that's all behavior is. Now, obviously, behaviors are very complex. Some are auditory, some involve movement, some involve, I don't know, making noise, some involve building shelter, some involve migration. There's a ton of behaviors, but they all fall into this basic pattern of stimuli received, stimuli processed, and then a response is enacted. And the rest of this video is basically going to be about various animal responses to specific stimuli. We also want to talk a little bit about what behavioral ecology is. So the rest of this um, video series is going to be about ecology. Today we're going to talk specifically about behavioral ecology, which is the behavior of organisms. And when we talk about the behavior of organisms, we have to talk about two separate things. Uh, the first thing we got to talk about is proximate causation, and that's initially how the um, behavior is initiated. So what is it from the outside world that actually causes this organism to exhibit some, some sort of behavior? And then the second one is ultimate causation, and that is why. So there's a stimulus that they're reacting to that's proximate, but why? Like, why are they exhibiting the reaction? Why are they exhibiting a mating reaction or a fight or flight or migration or whatever else? So proximate is the how, what causes it, and the second is ultimate, and that is the why. Like, why do they do it? The rest of this video is specific behavior, so let's go ahead and start talking through them. First thing we have got is called a fixed action pattern, also known as a FAP. Um, a fixed action pattern is a pattern of behaviors that is initiated by some stimulus. Um, it is unlearned, so organisms know this from the time that they are born. And once it's started, it usually can't be stopped. Um, one of the, I guess, best known examples of this is attacks in male stickleback fish. So stickleback is a species of fish. There are tons of different species, but one particular species has red bellies in the males. A researcher noticed that his male sticklebacks, anytime they saw something red, it didn't matter whether it was a male stickleback fish or a red delivery truck driving by outside, they would go into attack mode and they would attack whatever they had seen that was red. So he realized that there was a connection between red color and the fixed action pattern response. So what he did is he showed the fish a realistic model and then he showed them a ton of unrealistic models and he realized that as long as that thing had red on it, the male stickleback would attack it. So that's an example of a fixed action pattern. So the next behavior I want to talk about is migration. Migration is a long distance change in location. The map there on the right you can see is the migratory patterns of some birds that migrate from New Zealand throughout the Pacific, traveling as far as Alaska and Korea and the Americas. Um, there are several birds that will travel over 10,000 miles in their migratory uh, route. Now, the stimulus that causes this response would be a change in the seasons. Um, once that stimulus has caused the response, the birds will respond by migrating. Um, scientists have done a lot of work on what actually guides animals during their migration because obviously, you know, they can't pull up a GPS system that tells them turn right here, turn left there. Um, there have been experiments done that have shown that some organisms navigate according to the position of the sun, others navigate according to stars, and there might be some that um, navigate according to the magnetic fields of the earth. So there are several things that can guide organisms in their migration, but as far as today's discussion of stimulus response goes, stimulus, change in the seasons, response, migration. Next up is a behavioral rhythm. Now we've talked about circadian rhythms before. Circadian rhythms are the 24 hour cycles that run in organisms. This is like that, it's just different in that it is a long-term cycle. Now, by long-term cycle, I mean this might be a response to something as long as the seasons, or it could be response to changes in the phases of the moon. Either way, it's not a 24-hour cycle. Um, this could include things like migrations, which I just talked about. It could include um, mating and reproduction patterns. It could include um, like 
behavior hibernation nesting patterns. So all of these would go into behavioral rhythms, just kind of associate, you know, they're like circadian rhythms and that they are a regular occurrence. They just aren't attached to a 24-hour clock. And signals and communication are really actually one of the more interesting ones. They're probably the one, one of the areas of animal behavior that has been most studied by scientists. I've got a howler monkey there on the side. Their calls could be heard for miles as they communicate with one another. Um, communication is defined as the receiving of a signal and response to it. So some organism sends out a signal that is a stimulus. Another organism receives that signal that is a response. So communication involves a signal and a response. And communication falls into four major categories. Um, there's visual communication. So that is some sort of visual signal between the animals. Um, color and verbs would be a good example of this. There is chemical communication um, that is sending chemicals from one organism to another. This, An example of this would be pheromones, which I'm going to talk about in a second. There is tactile, which is communication through touch and then auditory which is obviously right now I'm communicating to you in an auditory manner it's making sound that causes some sort of response um, I didn't put up a slide of it but one of the more interesting cases of animal communication is bees communicating the location of food um, there's been a lot of work done with bees to figure out how it is they show the hive where food is and a group of researchers working in the early 1900s showed that bees actually use a dancing uh, language to show where food is. So when a bee comes back from searching for food, it will land in the hive, other bees will uh, gather around it, and that bee will do a specific dance. The dance shows where the food source is relative to the sun. It uses angles, it uses the position of the sun, um, distance is communicated. It's really a very sophisticated language that these bees use to show where the food that they are looking for is located. And like I just mentioned, pheromones are um, communication chemicals used quite frequently um, in mating behaviors. These chemicals are sent out and carried on the air or they are left on the ground or on a tree or something like that. But either way, the smell of these chemicals communicate messages to other organisms of the same species. A lot of times they're used for mating, but sometimes they're used for um, marking territory or defense or things like that. Um, it's been shown that a small amount of pheromone can have a huge effect. So there's a piece in your book that talks about how certain fish, when they are injured, they release a pheromone that causes a fright response in other fish, meaning the other fish move away from the area and kind of school together. Um, a piece of skin off of, I believe it said a minnow, a one square centimeter piece of skin produces enough pheromone to initiate a response in 56,000 liters of water. So that just goes to illustrate that quite a lot of pheromone goes a long way. And with that, we are done with our first video in this series on ecology. We've just gotten done talking about animal behaviors. Thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.